And then last but not least, we have perhaps one of the most important buttons. This is the download button in the lower right hand side of the toolbar. If you tap that, you get the shelf server interface. One of the things a bookshelf has that I think sets it apart from a lot of the other book readers out there is that you can download books from your own computer. Uh, unfortunately, using iTunes to sync them and do all of those kinds of things wasn't a possibility with the iPhone SDK. But instead, I've created the shelf server application which runs on your computer and exposes any files that you want to share to yourself. You can download them that way. It uses Bonjour, ZeroConf, whatever you want to call it, uh, Apple's automatic location technology in order to find your computer on your network. It, of course, requir requires Wi-Fi to operate. Um, and if you have any firewalls, routers, anything between your wireless network and where your computer is, that may cause some problems for you. You may need to disable a software firewall if you have one, uh, or tell your firewall that the shelf server is OK, you know, that it's, it, it's an accepted application. Um, in this particular case, everything's running on one computer, the, the beauty of the simulator, so we have no problems with that. You can see, however, that there's a little red key icon here. And what that's telling me is this shelf server needs a password. So if I tap right on that key, and then I click over on the right-hand side of this dialog, this uh, text entry screen, it's looking for a password. It's a very, very high secure password here. So I type in the password, hit return, go back, and now it's showing me a little green key. Now that's not necessarily saying the password's right, it's just saying that there is a password. If there's a problem, you would find out when you tap this row. That was indeed the right password, and so now what you can see is all of the directories that I've shared on my shelf server. And I can pick any of these and drill down into them. Um, I can go down as many levels as I want here. At any point, I can say download an entire folder, and you'll see it'll zip through real fast because this is all on the same computer, same network, and download all of the files and folders that were in that directory. I can also go and download a single file if I want. And again, that went pretty quickly. Now, if you look at the screen and you're not seeing files that you know are in your shared directory, the thing to keep in mind is the shelf server automatically filters out any file types that Bookshelf can't handle at this time. And I'm certainly adding support as quickly as I can for other file formats, but there's some it doesn't support. So if something's not appearing, um, you may be able to convert it to another format using various tools that are available online, um, or maybe download it from the place that you found it if it's a, a public, uh, freely accessible text. Um, I'll just make the statement here. It's worth saying, of course, most books are copyrighted. Um, the authors have worked hard. Please do respect their copyright. Uh, if you believe you have the right to read the book on your iPhone or iPod Touch, I'm not going to argue with you. Um, certainly I have a lot of texts of my own that I like to read. Many of them are Creative Commons. Some of them are purchased from online sources. Uh, just please respect copyright. Don't uh, use Bookshelf to do bad things. So in this interface, you can browse backwards. You can get back to the file listing. Now, sometimes if your Bonjour server doesn't show up, you may need to tap the rescan button. Yeah, it should pop up pretty quickly. When you're all done, you can tap the done button. And you can see the file tree that I downloaded is now visible on my device. So I have this file, nothing terribly exciting. It's just the ever popular lorem ipsum te text, kind of a pseudo Latin text for uh, typeface and typesetting and that sort of thing. So I'm scrolling down here. This is probably going to look awful on the, uh, the video. Unfortunately, this file still isn't large enough. I was hoping I grabbed a big enough one. Um, there's no red icon here. If this file was large enough, you would see a red arrow here, and simply tapping again would move to the next section. And that's also where these arrows come in. You can move to the next section. Uh, or if there is, if, if you've reached the end of a file, you can move to the next file by clicking on those. If you have a multi-chapter book like this, you'll end up navigating between the different chapters of the book instead of within a single file. Um, Bookshelf breaks files up into approximately 64 kilobyte check sections. The reason for that is just some limitations in the phone, and that's really the only way that it can be made to work. So if we browse back here, can see maybe I'm done with these. I can just delete them all. Away they go, and it deletes everything underneath. 
Now the other part of the download server that's worth mentioning here, this download interface, is the concept of favorite shelf servers. These are online servers that uh, anyone can run. Uh, if you have content that you would like to make available to Bookshelf, please contact me via email, uh, support at iphonebookshelf.com. I would be delighted to assist you in setting up a server. I do have this online server, which I am running, which just has a, a variety of public domain texts that you can download. Uh, and this works exactly the same way as a, a local shelf server on your computer. You just download the book. And there it is. So that's how, about all I have to show you in the iPhone section of things. Uh, I'm going to stop this video. We'll move on to the next one where I actually show you the computer side of Shelf Server. Uh, it's just a different screen, and so it's easier to do it in two videos. Thank you for watching this one, and I hope it's been helpful to you.